Hello, I'm Aaron Tormer, and uh, I am, I'm here to tell you about the Zcash Foundation's grant program. To put things into context, the Zcash Foundation, since its inception, has been sponsoring various activities. Uh, it started off with uh, the Open Source Miner Challenge that actually preceded the Zcash Foundation, uh, but was driven by many of the same sentiments, followed by the Test Transaction Awards, um, awarded to uh, um, David Jane Mercer, a.k.a. Redix42, to Lustro and to Mind Zcash. The ZK Proof Standardization Effort that we held workshops about earlier, the event that we are currently attending, Zcon Zero, sponsoring prizes for the underhanded crypto competition to see how uh, Zcash could have been undermined had diligent auditing reviews and cool crypto not been exercised very uh, carefully. And um, if you notice, all of these are fairly targeted and narrow sponsorships. Uh, some of them are retroactive, some of them um, are forward-looking, but uh, targeted for particular activities. And that is not enough. The Foundation would like to enable people to uh, create their own projects in a much wider variety of topics and uh, to make those projects happen. To this end, the grant program was established. It, uh, Proceeds in iterations. The first one was about half a year ago. The current one is ongoing. Another one is planned for later this year. And let me tell you how that works and where you could fit in. So the Zcash Foundation grad program is driven by the mission and values of the Zcash Foundation. I think there is no need to repeat them to this audience, but they are well eloquently enumerated on the Foundation's website. And these are broadly construed by this program. Uh, it's um, supposed to support software development as well as education and outreach, um, building and maintaining infrastructure on an ongoing basis, as well as doing uh, forward-looking science and research. And um, all of these are um, looking for the right funding models. Sometimes they can be directly monetized in which case the ZEF that we just heard about may be a perfect solution for funding them. But often, they are public goods that are hard to monetize and would ideally be released as open source, be ad-free, and avoid centralization. In this case, some kind of uh, public good sponsorship is required, which is the perfect um, role for a nonprofit 501c3 foundation such as ours. The grant program is oriented towards moderately and small size pro projects so on the scale of one to six person, person month plus expenses. But since we iterate the program every roughly six months, this does allow for ongoing projects as well. One crucial driver in the way the program is structured, as you'll see, is enabling open discussion, respecting the transparency and cognizance values of the foundation. And um, it was a, a structure with this uh, in mind uh, to enable everybody in this room, as well as all the people out there, to feed in their the information. As you'll see, there are many opportunities to provide such feedback. This uh, open process culminates in uh, a, a adjudication by the Grant Review Committee, um, a finite number of people who are tasked with coordinating, guiding, and reading all of the ongoing discussions and making recommendations, which are then used by the Board of Directors for the final funding decisions. Now, the process is driven uh, by our uh, need to inc be inclusive. In particular, be inclusive uh, in a community where many people do not have prior experience with funded projects, especially not ones funded by grant processes. Um, and therefore, uh, we try to make things uh, as lightweight, gradual, and adaptive as possible. Proposals start at a pre-proposal stage, sub submitting an informal issue on GitHub. And that follow, that's followed by a discussion a, a, over several weeks where people request additional details, bring up opportunities for expansion, for coordination, point out competition and how uh, that can be best handled, and uh, express their opinion about the importance of various projects. 
Following this preliminary input, the Grant Review Committee uh, makes uh, advisory invitations to the proposers on whether to proceed to the next stage, which is a full submission. That gets discussed further. The committee then makes its recommendations. The, the board uh, makes its decisions based on that. Funds are disbursed. And eventually, six months later, progress reports are submitted by the funded grants. That's the high-level process. But what's in there? What's in the submissions? And uh, how are they evaluated? So the full submissions include, uh, of obviously, uh, the motivation and overview of the project. Why is it needed? What would be the impact if it does get funded? They move on into the uh, discussion of technical approaches. How would this be done? How could it fail? What are the risks? What are the dependencies on external projects that need to be managed? What are the contingency plans? We ask the teams to present their qualifications and background so we can judge that part of the uh, potential and risk and uh, present a plan for how the success of the project would be evaluated. We are cryptocurrency. People's money is up to the security of what the foundation helps support. Um, and therefore, sec security considerations are explicitly pointed out as something that needs to be discussed. Does the proposal have any security risks? Does it require any security uh, education to mitigate those risks? And of course, schedule, budget, justification for the budget, along the scales I mentioned earlier. This is what the proposers need to send. The committee considers all of the above, as well as the ongoing input and discussion from the uh, GitHub issues, as well as external experts that we reach out to when we need additional exper expertise and perspective. The, in the decisions uh, that we make, we try to balance the coverage of topics um, and also the balance, to balance the demographies of proposers between academia, industry, uh, community members at large, uh, balanced geographically and across other demographic slices to the extent allowed by the actually submitted proposals. And finally, we try to uh, strike a balance in the, in the mix in the riskiness of the proposals. Some proposals are solid, you know what's going to get done, they, it may already be ongoing, it needs more fund for ongoing expenses or incremental improvements. Other proposals are high risk, high gain. They may fail, but if they don't, they could have a huge impact. Some are neither, but they propose something that is promising at the level of the community and ecosystem. People who are uh, finding their way into the fold and uh, you say, that would be nice to have. Even if it fails, we think that it would lead to ongoing projects by them and others. It's worth funding as well. So all of these considerations go into the deliberations. And let's talk about what it looks like in real life when it's applied. So the current ongoing proposal, uh, we announced it in uh, April and um, we have quarter of a million dollars committed to funding proposals under this, uh, under this iteration of the grant program. Of these $125,000 were committed by the Zcash foundations and the Blockchain Institute generously offered a matching donation of $125,000, bringing the total to 250. We have six members on the review committee and uh, you can see their names and I would like to point out in particular the presence of Monero Research Labs that um, is uh, I think a strong signal of our values of uh, no coin is an island and cognizance and responsibility to the community um, bringing uh, supposedly competing coins for their expertise and for their value to protecting people's financial privacy. Um, in the current round, there were 41 pre-proposals submitted. Quick rundown, there were eight on wallet development, nine on, uh, wallet development includes mobile wallets, uh, tailoring wallets to uh, specific uh, communities and needs, uh, integration with existing wallets and similar aspects. Uh, nine outreach projects about education, uh, creating videos and posters, um, and uh, building websites to help people use Zcash. 
eight projects on uh, research and implementation of cryptographic systems, of which three are about new construction for zero knowledge proofs, four projects on improving security and measuring privacy, seven on a proof of work and other consensus protocols, five projects on layer two protocols, such as Bolt that we heard about and others, eight projects on improving user experience in using Zcash, nine on financial integration with other systems, two on supporting ongoing expenses for online services, and three additional ones. And you may notice that this totals to more than 41 because, of course, some projects fall under several categories. Now, there was a trade-off in preparing this presentation. Should I spend my time giving amazing PowerPoint animations illustrating all of these, or should I go back to the review system and continue the discussions and reviewing of these 41 pre-proposals? As you can tell, I chose the latter. But if you follow the links uh, at the top of uh, many of my slides, you can see much more information and uh, occasionally better um, typographic formatting. Of these 41 proposals, 23 were invited to submit full proposals. As I mentioned, this is advisory, but reflects the committee's evaluation of what is likely to uh, converge into something competitive compared to the other proposals. 21 submitted full proposals. And the decisions, we didn't have room in the slides, so uh, we will announce them in upcoming weeks. But let me tell you about some decisions that were already made. Um, the previous grant program, the one ending uh, in uh, 2017, uh, is uh, it's, its uh, final stages. Um, it's, the call for papers went out in August. Decisions went, went out surprisingly quickly on November. Um, and even though the uh, foundation originally committed only $80,000, uh, the proposals were so good, we couldn't resist the temptation to award more than that, $127,000. Uh, we also had an illustrious grant review committing, committee, um, as usual, balancing uh, presence from academia, uh, from um, um, the community, and from other projects. And um, we had uh, um, 13 full proposals that were discussed along with the other ones extensively on GitHub. Uh, there were over 270 GitHub comments. Uh, that's of last time I checked, they keep on growing. Uh, that uh, reflected community's input into the decision process as well as into the subsequent evolution of these projects. And that really helped shape the progress and the content of the proposals. Um, for example, um, Jason Davies made uh, a great proposal for having an independent verification of various components of the Zcash software re rewritten in Rust uh, that got eventually funded. And uh, along the discussions, it was changed uh, to uh, identify a new opportunity for integration that would eventually lead us to a full re-implementation of Zcash D in Rust and is currently targeted at a fully verifying node that can at least uh, check the consensus rules in real time as the blockchain evolves. Another example is the work on the uh, desktop GUI wallet. Um, Vaklinov and Mercer uh, submitted proposals with significant overlaps and there was a lot of interaction that led to suitable refactoring. Out of the 13 full submissions, 10 were approved by the board. Here's their list. Um, and uh, let me quickly just dwell on a few of them. The first one is actually an interesting case study. Uh, Ivan Vaklinov, the author of the original Swing GUI desktop wallet on which uh, WinZek and others are based, and as well as adapted to several other uh, Zcash forks, uh, submitted his proposal and was awarded the full requested amount and could not receive it because he wanted to maintain financial privacy and therefore could not provide the foundation with the, all of the, uh, the administrative uh, documents that would have been required for 501c3 foundation to disburse funds. We don't know how to resolve it. It's something that we have to keep in mind as a constraint 
that we are operating and in the real world that goes beyond the cryptographic protocols. It's especially ironic for a privacy preserving cryptocurrency. Uh, the good news is that everything else got funded, uh, and in particular, we were happy to see that even the University of Luxembourg could actually process a cryptocurrency donation. It, it was not trivial, but that led to good work on analyzing the uh, Zcash chain and uh, pointing out that uh, in transparency addresses and interaction with them are vulnerable to blockchain analysis. Uh, we have the uh, Rust re-implementations of portions of Zcash that I described. Um, there, was, there were two other projects by Mercer that were funded, including porting of Zcash D to Windows that is nowadays being integrated into the up, upstream Zcash company's version of Zcash D, as well as uh, funding for his Block Explorer, for their Block Explorer. And um, there was a very successful outreach project that uh, led to, uh, a, to very valuable education in communities that would not have otherwise have heard of, of Zcash and many others. Now, I don't want to steal the thunder of, these, uh, of the people who are doing these good works or of uh, Josh, Anthony, uh, Sonia, and Paige who are working diligently to help them convey their results, but keep posted for forthcoming blog post announcements that will tell you much more about the success of these projects. Some concluding thoughts on the grant program. Uh, and here's one of those ugly URLs in the top, but it leads somewhere good. It leads to the place where we criticize ourselves as we go and point out all the things that could have been done better. And I encourage you to uh, feed your input there or to me personally or to the foundation's board and anyone else who can uh, uh, affect the process with whatever thoughts, improvements, or critique you have. Here are some of mine. I think we are doing well on balancing several competing issues. On one hand, we want to be friendly to people for, the, who, for whom this is the first such involvement, who have no experience with such formalities, and we want the threshold to be very low. We also want uh, there to be an open discussion, give, providing all of the valuable input I mentioned, and um, that works well with the GitHub-based process. It also um, interacts with uh, our need for um, and to, to fully understand and research the proposals, the co cognizance value of the, of the foundation. That entails some criticism and harsh questions and uh, digging into proposals uh, in a way that is not trivial to keep um, on uh, positive tones, and I think we have struck the right tone nonetheless. There's also the issue of fi financial responsibility. The foundation, the foundation does have finite resources and needs to allocate them prudently, so a lot of consideration is uh, spent on uh, prioritization and uh, risk management. Um, I think we are doing well, but can do much better on the community-driven project crystallization, ha getting inputs uh, fed into uh, that first shove in the project that puts them on the right track. We have an open pro process, but we haven't heard from many people that GitHub is by itself a barrier, and they don't know, they don't feel comfortable about uh, providing their inputs uh, on that thing that is only used by software development nerds. So we are very much looking for friendlier platforms that uh, would work well for all. Um, another question is about the level of obligations and commitments and reporting required from the proposers. So far, we've been fairly lax and friendly on that front. Um, we uh, basically allow them a discretion in how to exercise their plans while expecting them to uh, stick to it as long as it makes sense and um, uh, do their best effort. Um, some pro projects may require closer monitoring, and uh, certainly uh, we would like to see more ongoing output uh, informing the community on what's going on and maybe giving people op an opportunity to lend a hand where things are going as well as expected. And lastly, but crucially, and perhaps uh, uh, something that uh, is, will be on the mind of the governance panel and the upcoming board, is uh, what else is needed. 
because the grant program, for all of its merit, doesn't solve all of the foundation's uh, sponsorship plans. It uh, does not allow funding out of cycle. It uh, is fairly heavyweight for small, simple grants. And uh, there seems to be room for a, both for simpler, lighter uh, grants, as well as for some more systematic way to handle focused tasks, and the, the, the crucial goals that were identified, especially in the first day of our deliberations, uh, by the, having the foundation contract, hire, or crowdsource uh, some, of its, uh, uh, some of its priorities and plans and um, development needs. With this in mind, I would encourage you to help review the current proposals, to submit your own proposals for the next round, and to go to that one more ugly URL at the bottom, where we are collecting ideas that uh, uh, will inform people looking for grant ideas in the, in the next round, and we need to brainstorming about all the cool stuff that we can do. Um, and on this note, I will let the governance panel take over and tell us how they're going to do all of those other amazing things. Thank you.